comfort. You can expect peace of mind. You can expect protection. I've seen it over and over and over. When one of God's elect is attacked, just wait about three months and see what happens to those that cause the problem. Be thankful. You know, that's what we're supposed to be before our Heavenly Father. Let's put into thanksgiving what thanksgiving is all about. It's thanks to our Father for the blessings He provides for us, for the knowledge, for the wisdom, for the protection. And when you're in His path, when you're in His way. There is a word grouping uh, of various words, both in Hebrew and Greek, that have a great deal to do with being thankful or to give thanks. And the word in the Greek is in your Greek dictionary. I'm going to give it to you because some might have problems finding it. 3670, and it's homologie. Homologie. It's actually made up of two Greek words that both of you are familiar with. Homo, that's man, humanity, man, woman, no gender. And, um, and of course, um, the word itself, meaning man's word, logos, okay? It's homo logos. Uh, when I pronounce it in that way by splitting the words, it picks up a lot easier, does it not? But what it means, it's man's word of thanks. It means a, a, even a contract, a covenant with God. It means giving something spiritually and in faith, declaring and being thankful to Almighty God for what He has done for us. And we find it woven through the Scriptures, throughout the Word of God, in, in this word grouping of thanks and thanksgiving. I want you to open your Bibles, if you would, to Psalms 116. We're going to begin in the Old Testament. To confess something in faith, homo log the logos, the man's word, man's declaration, and man declaring. That means making a public stand and not being ashamed of it, letting your face reflect the light of God so that people can say, there goes a Christian. There goes somebody that loves our Heavenly Father. There's someone that follows Jesus Christ. It shows and it lights. It leads. It's a beautiful thing. Man's declaration of faith and publicly unashamedly showing his love or her love for Almighty God. Psalms 116, the Psalms here that uh, I love the Lord, because He hath heard my voice and my supplications. He always does, beloved. It doesn't mean He's going to answer it necessarily, but He hears you, and that should be enough for you. Because if it's not right for you, He's not going to give it to you anyway. He's not going to give you a rattlesnake to hurt yourself with. Okay? Only what's good for you. He knows the future. He knows His destiny, your destiny. And when... You, when you know He hears your supplication, and He does your prayer, that should be enough. You should love Him enough to leave it in His hands then. Patience, patience. To, because He hath inclined His ear unto me, therefore will I call upon Him as long as I live. I mean, I, I am His forever in this flesh body, as long as I live in this flesh and even into the eternity, I am His. Lock, stock, and barrel. But do you understand, He has inclined His ear to, to me. Do you know why? Because this person is walking righteously. What does righteously mean? It means doing what's right. When a person does to the best of their ability what's right, you've got God's ear. You don't have to worry about that. You know, when, when you'll hear somebody, I get many questions, God never hears by prayer. He does. It's how you live and how you talk to Him, what your man's declaration of faith, of obedience, of love. What does He want mainly from you? Your love. Hosea 6.6, 6. I don't want your burnt offerings. I want your mercy, the unmerited favor, your love. 
That's what God wants from his children. Verse 3, the sorrows, or you might say in the Hebrew, cords. The cords of death compass me. And the pains of hell, that's to say the grave, see, oh, get hold upon me, I found trouble and sorrow. Oh, hey, when you walk this old earth, you're going to find it, it's out there. It's there and it's all around. But what have you got to worry about? God knows you. You have his ear. And you shake in your boots, then you're not a believer. You have no faith or trust in him that he does have your ear. Therefore, you can boldly stand as a, a Christ man. That's a Christian knowing Father loves you. And even though there's trouble around, and even though the grave and the cords of death show occasionally as you begin to age and so forth, but what's that? If you're a Christian, you know that's just the beginning. You have the eternity. You have forever and ever and ever. Verse 4, Then called I upon the name of the Lord, O Lord, Yahweh, in the Hebrew tongue, I beseech thee, deliver my soul. Now, you know as it's written in Ezekiel chapter 18, verse 4, All souls belong to God. You know, you hear these preachers say, you need to give your soul to God too late, friend. He's already got it. Okay? It's his to do with as he chooses. But he's always right, and he's always fair and equitable. If you deserve eternal life, you, you've got it. You've got it made. Why? He loves you because you're doing what's right. And, but what did this person do? Did they just sit there like a wet noodle? No, they ask, save me. They talk to the Father. Not to, not to a bunch of people. They talk to the Father. They gave thanks to Him and even asking. He loves it. It gets His attention. You've got His ear. Verse 5, Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Yea, our God is merciful. He's merciful, and He's also gracious. That means He gives unmerited favor. If you're a believer, you may not deserve it. You know, uh, unfortunately, mankind, sometimes with the way we act, we're not worthy, perhaps. But when you repent and love the Lord Jesus Christ and ask forgiveness, He's merciful. He will save your soul. The Lord, verse 6, the Lord preserveth the simple. That's, that's to say the sincere, better translated in English. That doesn't quite grab it, okay? The guiltless is another, uh, would be a better translation either than simple. Th those that are sincere. Do you mean it or you play Christian? I mean, you've got to shuck it down right where it's at, my friend. You either are or you're not. You're either a believer or you're not. There's no such thing as, well, I believe a little bit. No, you don't. You're a non-believer. God loves those that are sincere. That, that means you're trying. doesn't mean you're perfect. I don't really know anyone that is, except our Father Himself and the Son. But you're trying, you're sincere in it. Verse 7. Um, I was brought low, and he helped me always. Verse 7. Return unto thy rest, O my soul, for the Lord hath dealt bountifully with thee. Do you know where your rest is? This is a mistake a lot of Christians make. They read John chapter 14, and it says there in the English, Oh, I've got a mansion, but that word mansion is mono in the Greek. It means a resting place, and Christ is your rest. You don't have to wait till heaven to receive it. You have that rest in Christ today. The word abide is mino, and when you abide in his rest, you're in his, your mansion. Right here today. Not as it will be, but to protect you, to hear you, to guide you, to direct you. That's something to be thankful for. That's something to celebrate Thanksgiving about, is that He 
loves you into that rest, okay? Because he always deals, um, I mean, he owns everything. So he will give you what you can take care of, okay? I know that upsets some people when I say that, but it's true. God will give you what you're able to take care of. Otherwise, if he gives you too much, somebody's going to rip you off, okay? So you have to think about that and pray about it. Think through it with wisdom. Eight, for thou hast delivered my soul from death, mine eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. That's what God does for you. Talk about something to be thankful about. You know, God is not the God of death. He's the God of the living. Abraham is right with him this moment. David is with him this moment. Okay. They're not dead. He's the God of the living, and he gives us eternal life. To be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord in that heavenly body. God grants you that when you follow him. That is something to really give thanks for. Okay, verse 9. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. Are you? You're going to crawl? You're going to slump? I'm, I'm just going to try to make it through. Really? You're representing Christ because you're a Christ man, Christian. You're going to walk through the land of the living. You're going to give an example of one that knows God has his hand upon them. They have God's ear. They hear, and God hears. That's called communication. I'm going to serve him in the land of the living. Verse 10, this is why we came here, and here's where this word settles in. Listen to it carefully. This is a statement, okay? I believed, that's important, I believed, therefore, have I spoken. That's man's word. Homo logos. I'm, I'm giving it to you in the Greek. This is naturally we're reading from the Hebrew. If you were reading the Septuagint, there you would be. I was greatly afflicted. Did it matter? You know, if you are a believer, Satan's going to afflict you. And if you just stand there and let him pour you, what a shame when God has given you the power and the authority to order anything negative out of your life, away from your family, and you stand there and let Satan eat him alive, shame on you. God grants that. Why? He loves you. Um, when you believe the affliction doesn't matter, why? They, he can't get to you. The whole book of Job was written for this purpose, to show you that when God allows the wall to come down and Satan to persecute, and the word Job means persecution, telling you how to do it, Job gets a bunch of ratchet jaws that travel from all over the country and give him advice. Ratchet jaw, ratchet jaw, 38 chapters of it. And finally, God says, what do you want to listen to fools for? You've got me. And that's the way it goes. Do you listen to God or do you listen to man? That's why it's important that you believe and that you speak what you believe. The affliction then doesn't matter. If you have power over all of your enemies, how could affliction bother you? It shouldn't. You should take care of business. Verse 11, I said in my haste, all men are liars. I, I mean, they, they, all men are false, really. is That's a really a heavy translation, but it's kind of the truth. That all men are false. That's men's way, the world's way. God's way is right. God's way is truth. God's way is protection. God's way is to have his strength to remove the affliction, or you can live in it. It's your choice. You can just right in there and swim with them if you want to. I mean, it's full of crocodiles. Jump in. Okay? Swim with them. Or 
you can follow God and know he has, uh, he has given you power and authority over not part of your enemies. What does Luke 10 say? All your enemies. Exercise that power. Okay, verse 12. What shall I render unto the Lord for all his benefits toward me? That's a question. And it's important that you listen to it. What do I owe God for all that he has done for me? It's answered in the next two verses. This is what you should do for God because of all the benefits he has given you, power over your enemies, blessings, love. 13, I, this is what he expects from you, I will take the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will take that communion with him, for him. And I, I will call upon his name. I will serve him. Verse 14, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Not ashamedly, but showing that your vow of truth. Homo logos, man's word, man's divine purpose, man's divine faith, uh, statement of faith, that he loves the Lord. And that brings God's love and his blessings upon you, upon your family, upon those around you. Because no one has to ask by the glow on that face, there goes a child of God. Verse 15, precious is the sight, precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his saints. That's to say his separate... Saints simply means separated ones. That's one that believes. One that knows they love the Lord. Um, naturally. Well, how could that be precious? Well, because you're with him. Do you know something? Do you know why he created you? Have you ever read the last verse of Revelation chapter 4? He created you for his pleasure. Have you ever pleasured him like me? Told him you loved him. I mean, just really had a down-to-earth talk with him. That's what he wants. He wants you to be with him, but he wants you to love him. He doesn't want you to ignore him because he is Father. He is, he is your creator. He deserves that respect. 16, O oh Lord, truly I am thy servant. I am thy servant, two times for emphasis, and the son of thine handmaid. Thou hast loosed my bounds. The truth will set you free. Or you can swim with the crocodiles, okay? And, um, or, or alligators, whichever you prefer. Okay. The world is full of them. They're out there. They're waiting. Some of them, I mean... What is it? Sharks, even. They, they, I, I wonder. It seemed like I heard somebody say the other day that sharks won't attack lawyers. I don't know. I don't know if that's true or not. Okay, but I don't believe I would trust totally on that. Anyway, be that as it may, you, you don't have to swim with them. You're a god. I, I, I don't want you to take that wrong. That you're not something special. You're sincere. That's what makes you special. That's what makes you a separated one. You care. And he cares for you. Um, verse 17, I will offer to thee the sacrifice of thanksgiving. Toda in the Hebrew tongue. And will call upon the name of the Lord. When you call upon his name, what do you call for? Don't, don't always just go with gimme. Yeah, gimme, 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 gimme. They know you love him. That's what you call on his name for, is a little thanksgiving to let him know you appreciate what he's done for him. Appreciate him for what? You just said I set you free. Okay. That in the Son, that's Emmanuel, God, if you believe upon him, you're set free. The truth will set you free. John chapter 8, verse 32. Give or take a verse. No, I'm, I'm, I'm right. I could be wrong, but the truth will set you free. Okay. Verse 18, I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Don't ever be ashamed of, of uh, making that vow that you love him. 
because you know he loves you. And it's, it's an easy declaration dec to say. <laughs> Very easy. 19. In the courts of the Lord's house, in the midst of thee, O Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Do you know what that is in the Hebrew? Praise ye the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay. It's one of the hallelujah psalms that is sung at that time in thanks, in appreciation. Uh, turn back to the 34th psalm with me here. Again, be thankful. That's what thanksgiving is truly about if you want to communicate and open that line of communications with your Father and have Him intercede in your life and protect you you want, to, you want to follow those thanks uh, to him and your word, homo uh, logos, let it be a divine declaration. I believe. Okay. Verse 1 in Psalms 34, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Don't ever forget him. That's when you really wade into stuff, okay? Trouble. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord, the humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Those that, um, that uh, uh, love him, that follow him, they're going to see that blessing. They're going to taste it. Oh, magnify the Lord with me and let us exalt his name together. Why? That's where all blessings come from. They come from him, your father. Do you, do you understand it's your closest relative? He's your Father, actually. He created you. Why? For His pleasure. Meaning, He loves you. I sought the Lord, and He heard me and delivered me from all my fears. Do you know that uh, this word fears is the fears of the world, fears of this? And um, God will... When, when you understand and accept the plan of God in your forehead, it's putting his seal in your forehead, it means you know God's plan. Do, do you know what man fears? Man fears the unknown. And when you have the seal of God in your forehead, that's why Satan is told in Revelation chapter 9, verse 4, don't you dare touch mine anointed that have the seal of God in their forehead. Why? You can't. Because you know he's a fraud, you know he's a fake, and you find him rather than to be a temptation and a abomination. Okay, he's, that he just delivers you from the anxieties, the unknown, and then when you know it, you know what to do about it. Okay, verse five: They looked unto him, and were lighted, and their faces were not ashamed. They shine. Do you know why they were lighted? Lighted up like a, a candelabra, okay? That's the presence of God in the face of a person shining forth, not ashamed. Simply the presence of the Holy Spirit in one. Makes that, it needs no announcement. Be, it, it is felt. And they're not ashamed of it. They wear it. They wear that spirit. And he is the main light, but you're a lampstand that reflects that light. Don't hide it. Don't put it under a bushel. And never be ashamed of it. Verse 6. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him and saved him out of all his troubles. Why? It's his child. Wouldn't you expect it? the greatest, lovingest father in, that ever has been and ever will be. If a child cries out, he hears it. Do you understand that's what brought him to Sodom and Gomorrah? He heard the cries of the little ones, and he hears them again today, my friends. Verse 7, The angel of the Lord encamped round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. Those that are unseen, do you believe that? I believe it. God protects His children. They're there, and they do protect. When, when you can't see the unseen, 
And you got to realize you got to open your spiritual eyes before you're ever going to see it. And he still protects you. Verse 8, O oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Why? Well, God blesses him. There's no big deal in that. God just does it. He, God loves to bless his children that pay attention to him, that know him. Nine, O oh, fear the Lord, ye his saints. Again, that's simply separated ones. Do you know what it means by separated? Some people say, well, I'm a saint. No. You know, uh, in the sense that you're a Christian, that separates you from sinners. You're still a sinner, but you sin occasionally. But it separates you from one that's lost and gone to hell, okay? Or is headed that way unless there's some changes in the process. But you see, that's the beauty. You could make a difference. That shine from your face, which is the presence of the Holy Spirit, without saying a word, can make a difference in a life. It can. It can help. It can support. It can give strength when one is really down. It picks them up and it gives life. Separated in that sense that you carry the light. The young lions do lack and suffer hunger. I mean, young lions are so strong, man, they can do anything, but they, they still suffer. But they that seek the Lord shall not want any good thing. And you, you know, if you ever really get down on yourself, if you want to check out whether you're a believer or not, read that verse. Read it real good, okay? Because if you're in him, he's dealing with you. If you come up on a rock in the road, he's dealing with you. You see, sometimes he expects us to mature. That word can be translated perfect. We never quite make that, but you can mature. And he may have a big rock in the road there. He wants you to lift out of the way for somebody else instead of him doing it for you. So don't be discouraged. Don't never be discouraged. You shall not want any good thing. He'll provide it. Verse 11, Come, ye children. Hearken unto me, I will teach you the fear of the Lord. This word fear in the Hebrew, do you know that it also translates revia, love? It's, it's a strange word. It can go either way. And I want you to make a note mentally, if, if you haven't already got it embedded there, Proverbs chapter 1, verse 7, the beginning of wisdom is to read there. Almighty God. If you love God, that's the beginning of wisdom, of knowledge, of understanding, okay? That's how the fear is removed, is with love. Twelve. What man is he that desireth life and loveth many days that uh, he may see good? Most, most everybody does. What man is he? Most everyone. Keep thy tongue from evil and thy lips from speaking guile. Do you want to get in trouble? Do you want to you want to not receive God's blessings? Then let your tongue turn evil for a little bit. Did you hear what they said about Gertie? I hope there's no Gertie here. I'm making this up, okay? Did you hear what they said about Gertie? Well, Gertie's a Christian. She didn't do anything. But the gossipers like to let their little evil tongues wag, okay? It doesn't do any good, but Christians know better. Unless you've seen it with your own eyes, it shouldn't be a fact to you. If you what, did it, what did it say in a prior verse we read? All men are what? All men are liars, did it say, or false, misleading? Be careful, okay? What can you trust? The Word of God, okay? And those that believe. Depart from evil. That's simple, isn't it? Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. How do you seek peace? Well, who's the Prince of Peace? There's only one. You, you don't need three guesses. The Prince of Peace is Christ, of course. Seek him, find him. Do you know something? He's he's 
He's uh, right there at the door. When you ask, He loves you. So that's where you find peace. But then, what, what does it do? It says pursue it. I just want him to come down here because I'm a special child and I just want him to bless me. I just, no, that, that isn't what it said. It said pursue. You know, do, do you know that's the way a young man wins the fancy of a young lady? He pursues her. I get these letters from guys, my wife won't have anything else to do with me and I just hate it. She's about to leave me. Pursue her. Open that car door and say, Sugar, let me help you. Okay. That's the way you did when you pursued her, right? You know? You said, Whoo, you're a sweet thing. You know? I, I mean, I don't know why, but that really gets their attention, see? But that's the way you have to do God. He says, Pursue. That doesn't mean, I just want God to just pour it on me. Well, work for it, okay? Pursue. Well, how do I, in His Word, absorb it, live it, and uh, and grow strong within it. All right, and He's going to bless you. Okay, and uh, let me find my place. Okay, we'll go with. I'm going to I'm going to to 15. The eyes of the Lord are upon the righteous, and His ears are open unto their cry. You don't have to worry about it. Do you understand that? He has you in His sights. Christianity is not a, a religion. It's a reality. God is real. Christ is real. His Word is real. It's not a game. It's a reality. And he's waiting there to help you when you pursue. The face of the Lord is against them that do evil. To cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. And if anybody's doing evil and wonder why God doesn't bless them, well, there's your answer. Okay? It's real simple. Um, God is planning a perfect earth here. He's bringing heaven right here to earth. Revelation chapter 21. And he's going to get rid of a lot of dead wood. Okay? Uh, verse 17, The righteous cry, and the Lord heareth. If the righteous cry, the Lord hears. Better translated. And delivereth them out of all their troubles. That's his promise. He, he's not just joking around with you. He means it. He will hear your cry when you ask for help. If you believe. If you try to do what's right. If you follow Him, if you repent when you do go wrong, the Lord is nigh unto them that are of a broken heart and save us such as be of a contrite spirit or a contrite of spirit. He does. He supports you. Let me ask you a question. If God supports you, who could have anything to do against you? Did you hear what I said? If God supports you, what good would it do somebody to come against you? I'd hate to be in their shoes, right? Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Do you understand A-L-L? -L? That's all. That's all for you all. You understand? Okay. He means all, as long as you are honest with Him, if you're straightforward. He keepeth, all his, uh, he keepeth all His bones, not one of them is broken. And of course, this alludes to Jesus Christ on the cross whenever He paid that sacrifice. Okay. Evil shall slay the wicked. And that's the wicked one in the Hebrew manuscripts. And they that hate the righteous shall be desolate. Those, he's going to destroy the wicked one and those that hate the righteous one, Christ, who not a bone was broken, uh, shall be desolate. Uh, the, the Lord redeemeth the soul of his servants, and none of them that trust in him shall be desolate. Uh, you know, that's a good feeling, to know that he loves you, that he cares. 
You know, you do understand God has a plan. Let's go to the New Testament real quickly. Acts chapter 7. Do you know that every person is important to God in God's plan of salvation? Every person. Why? Do you realize every person is different? Do you understand that your DNA is different than anyone else's? Well, why did God do that? Because he wanted someone like you. He has a reason for it. Don't question that. And that reason, of course, is because he loves you and he, he does have that purpose, and you have a destiny. It may be to do nothing but stand against the false one, but to carry that Holy Spirit, that that light reflects from you, your life, that it influences others. You know, you don't, many people will say, well, I'm just not a good speaker, I just can't. You don't have to speak, you don't have to say anything, be there. And be assured of yourself because of Him. And that affects people. They know. Uh, speaking of God using people, uh, the eighth, seventh chapter of Acts is, is one of the greatest uh, summaries of God's whole overall plan when poor old Stephen, just before they killed him, Paul being present. And he makes this declaration in Acts chapter 7, verse 17. In the word we're grouping that we're dealing with here, and be thankful, applies. 17. But when the time of the promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew and multiplied in Egypt. Do you know what this word promise is in the Greek tongue? It's engele, or ah, rather. Ep. Angela. Do you know what it means? It means a bone. And the other is angel, messenger. When it was time for the messenger of the promise, God sent him. Okay, and had sworn it he, to Abraham. He keeps his word. Verse 18, till another king arose which knew not Joseph. 19, the same dealt subtly with our kindred and evil entreated, evil entreated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end and they might not live. They, they were going to kill all the male children. Okay. Well, how is God wants a deliverer to be born at this time? The messenger has declared it. And Pharaoh has ordered all the male children to be killed. So how is he going to work around this? 20. In the which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nourished up in his father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. Why? Because God had his hand on that little basket, that little ark, the same ark that saved man in the beginning, the ark that saved the deliverer in that river, and that little sister walking down the reeds on the bank observing where that little basket went. You know, uh, no crocodile bothered it. God had his hand on that deliverer. One person! He used to deliver the children from this bondage. Why? Just think about it a moment. Why did he do that? Because he promised. He gave his word. Man's word is fine of a declaration of faith, but when God gives his word, in English, with that messenger, it's going to come to pass as it's written, so you can count on God's word. Uh, you see, you might take notice, he's in charge, okay? always has been, he always will be. Sometimes statesmen get really important, you know, we're going to, 
we're going to have a special meeting to do this, that, or the other. Well, it's according to whether God wants it or not. Okay? It doesn't matter. It's whether God wants it. He's still on the throne. And God still uses whomever he will. There's a reason that you enjoy your Father's word, and there's a reason you're thankful. Because you are his child, and he does love you. Second Corinthians, we're going to really go in the New Testament back where we started. We're going to go to Second Corinthians chapter 4. But we're going to go all the way back. I mean, we're going to have a re replay of Psalms 116. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13. And it reads, We, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, and here comes your quote, remember it from Psalms 116, I believed... And therefore have I spoken, we also believe and therefore speak. Leo, that logos, that word that is carried forth, man's declaration. And um, naturally that's a, a play of Psalms 116 verse 10 that we read so, that is so powerful. That word of man, homo logos, man's word of faith to Almighty God, believing beyond a doubt, and so speak. Uh, let, me, let, me, let me just qualify that a little bit. You know, a person reads the word and gets real strong, and then when he gets ready to speak, he says, I don't know for sure. I, I, I read something about that one time, but you know what? I, I, sometimes I get scared. Sometimes I just don't know for sure. Well, you should. That's what the Word says. God speaks and God means it. Listen to your father, the nearest relative you have. When he declares it, that's it. It's written. So speak. I'm not trying to tell you to be a smart aleck. I hope everybody realizes that. You know, there's a way to speak with discipline and love without it sounding like an old marine sergeant, okay? Uh, most of you can do that. It's hard for an old sergeant not to, though, sometimes. But in love. But the point is, is discipline yourself knowing that you have the authority, that you don't have to take a back seat and mean what you say and say what you mean. Verse 14, knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise up us also by Jesus and shall present us with you. We're a family. That's not playing church. It's a reality. For all things are for your sakes. All the sufferings, all the little troubles you may go through, it's for your sake that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. Eucharistia. Charista. That means, that Thanksgiving means um, to, um, to give credit, to give thanks, and um, uh, to, um, uh, when, when you uh, give that thanks, you do it from the bottom of your heart. You mean it. It's like, um, when, when you give that praise, hallelujah, praise ye the Lord, and give him credit for what he has done. That's what he wants, okay? He wants your love. Verse 16, for which cause we faint not, we never give up, okay? But through our out, though our outward man perish, Yet the inward man is renewed day by day. Do you, do you understand that? Do you know what the inward man is? That's, that's your spiritual being, your heavenly body that dwells in. It gets stronger and stronger and stronger every day, even when the flesh is going downhill. You should be stronger in his word, in his knowledge, in his love. For, verse 17, for our light affliction, this little trouble, 
which is but for a moment, worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. I mean, it doesn't even compare. If you put it on the scales, man, it, doesn't, it won't even come close to balancing. While we look not at the things which are seen, listen carefully, but at the things which are not seen, for the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. Let's just go two verses and I'm going to stop in the chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house, that's this flesh body made out of earth, of, uh, of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God, and house not made with hands, it's not human, eternal and in the heavens. A child of God, created as God. When God would say, let us create man in our image. Let's make him look like we look. For in this we groan earnestly, desiring to be clothed upon with our house, which is from heaven. And if you were to continue on, and we're going to stop there in the 8th verse, it would say, it, to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. Okay, Just like that. We don't serve a God of the dead. We serve a God of the living, and He does live. When, when this uh, life, flesh, is put off, then that's the beginning. You, and, but the beauty, God protects you even now. That's why you've got to close sometimes your flesh eyes and open your spiritual eyes to see what is unseen by most. God is there to make it happen as he wishes it to happen. Do you not remember when um, Elisha, Elijah's man, went with his armor bearer up to a hill? There, there, were over a, there were hundreds of thousands of people out there. And Elisha says, we're going to attack. And the old boy said, Elisha, there's just two of us. Let's think about it. Just two of us. And Elisha says, God, could you just open that veil and let him see what's right above our head? And God opened that veil. And there was an army that you couldn't number come charging down that hill. It frightened the enemy so bad that many of them killed themselves running away. So, you know, we're not playing church. God is real. When he says it, he means it, and when he means it, he says it. Get familiar with it. Heavenly Father, thank you, Father. And we just thank you from the bottoms of our heart, Father, for your word that strengthens us, that lifts us, Father, that blesses us. Thank you for being our Father. We ask it in Yeshua's precious name. Amen. The Mark of the Beast on CD is our free introductory offer to you. What is the Mark of the Beast? Many false teachers would have you believe it will be a tattoo on your forehead or a computer chip implanted under your skin. It is getting light in the game. You need to know what the mark of the beast is. As it's written in Revelation chapter 13 verse 8, many will be deceived. There is no need for you to be deceived. Christ said in Mark 13, 23, Behold, I have foretold you all things. Jesus indeed told us how not to be deceived, and Pastor Arnold Murray takes you on a step-by-step -step study of God's Word concerning this critical subject, the mark of the beast. The telephone call is free. The CD is free. We don't even ask for the shipping and handling. It is free as well. All you need to do is call 800-643-4645 to request your one-time, one-per-household copy of the mark of the beast. You may also request your free CD by mailing your request to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Don't be deceived by Satan. Do you know that America, I wish I could remember, I'm going to have to check it out. We're 200 and something, a very low number. We're only like about 220 years old, I'll say that. That's not correct, but I'll say it. It may be. We're, America is only 220 years old to be a nation. There were, it was, there was nations here before we came. They're called the American Indians, as well as other peoples. But uh, we're, we're, look at the population. Look at the awesome growth that this nation has done in 200 years. We've had about 6,000 from the beginning. 
with people migrating. Where did all these people migrate from? Then don't think it's any big thing that people move around. I don't know how many times have you moved in your lifetime. Okay. Well, some had to move from... Uh, I know there were many Irishmen in this country because of uh, bad potatoes. Okay. Be that as it may. Dave from New Hampshire. I, I know Jesus was conceived on December the 25th. And he was born on September the 29th, but I have looked over and over trying to find it in the Bible. No luck so far. Is it in the King James? If so, where? Can you please tell me where? Well, it, it's in the book of Luke, chapter 1, if you relate his conception with that of John the Baptist, okay? That is to say, the child of Elizabeth and Zechariah. You will find it, and you know, you're going to have to do a little work. It's all figured on the course of Abaya. And you have to know about the course of Abaya and the priest that would serve it, what time of the year it falls on. And then you know that John the Baptist was six months older than Christ, and it locks it in right in the good old King James. If you want that work done for you, there is an appendix in the Companion Bible, or I have a work titled Christmas. And it's all, all the hard work is done for you in that one little tape or cassette or, or CD or whatever you want to call it. October the 4th, this would be Natal Nicolette from Oklahoma. Um, many thanks for your teaching. You're welcome. I have a question concerning a person's use of herbal remedies for medical conditions and using a farmer's almanac for planting gardens and tending animals. A relative has spoken against my studies of these for our home use. She claims it is witchcraft in nature worship, even refusing to use the spring well that my husband and I had drilled after an old family friend located it with a peach tree limb. Am I missing something? No, you're, you're not. Um, is, isn't this just how our ancestors survived before water towers and Walmart? <laughs> Please give scripture to show this. Well, it, it is true. You know, let's, let's take, probably, you know, they'll say, well, you want a witch a well for me? Well, it's, it's a, what is, what is water running under this earth? It's a very natural thing. It's water running. Do you know what happens when it runs? It sets up a field. And some people are gifted enough they can take a peach limb, uh, green, and feel that field. Or anybody, just about anybody, can take two co coat hangers and, and cut them and bend them in such a metal. I'm talking about metal now. And make, make an L where you just let the metal rest in your arms and have the two long metals sticking out this way, not that long, and walk in your yard, field, or wherever, and when you walk over a stream, there is a field there, and those metals will cross, okay? But that, that's not, a witch doesn't do that. It's a field set up in nature itself, okay? And just because somebody calls it witching, it's not witching. And... And to go by the almanac, that is to say, to plant certain crops and certain signs, and naturally, many might say, well, how could that possibly be? Why? Well, hey, when, when, let's just take the ocean where you can see the water. You, you know, we've got these tides that come in <whistles> five feet. Woo, the whole ocean raised five feet. What causes it? The moon. Do you not think that when the moon it stops at the ocean and turns off this uh, power, or do you think it raises the water level of the earth when it goes over also? And that if you plant a root crop in the right sign, the chances are better. It doesn't mean it's going to work every time, but the chances are better that it's going to reach that moisture that it's supposed to have. It's a natural thing. We learn over long periods of time. You know, uh, the civilized tribes taught people how to really farm this country and took it from there and came on. 
and um, uh, God blesses those that know how to tend and take care of God's good earth. Uh, Leela from Florida, I have a question. In your opinion, do you think the fallen angels were the ancient gods of Rome, Greek, and so forth? This seems logical to me, but I would like your opinion. Well, uh, people's minds are very... Um, uh, people's imaginations can run wild. Mythology is where they really come from, but hey, I can, I'll go along with that. That that mythology was here, and it was brought forth, in, especially in as much as there was a second influx of the fallen angels, that mythology would naturally pick up on it. All right, uh, like, for example. The Great Flood is spoken of in many religions other than the King James Bible of an actual happening here on earth and uh, so forth. Molly from North Carolina, why did God make man? Well, I'm, I'm sure, Molly, a lot of women would wonder that, you know. It's, uh, but God made man for his own pleasure, really. Uh, isn't it strange? That's about three or four times that the last verse of Revelation chapter 4 has come up. God loves his children. They are his children. Just like you love your children when they behave properly and, and make you proud of them, you know, well, so does he, okay? And um, Mike from Michigan, Pastor Murray, I've been studying with you since 2000. I'm incarcerated and just recently guys have been asking me questions about the Bible so I started teaching them one of the guys told me he hears voices and he said they told him to commit the crime he's in here for my question is is this demonic possession I can't get oil to anoint I'm running out of time so I'm just gonna say God will accept that anoint and keep going but use the power in the name of Christ to help uh, in, in your teaching and so forth. Stick with the Word of God. Let God's Word do the teaching. Hey, I love you all a lot because you enjoy studying our Father's Word chapter by chapter and verse by verse. Most of all, your Father loves you for it. Okay? He truly does. Make His day, He's going to make yours. Brought to you by your tithes and offerings. If we've helped you, you help us keep coming to you. Once you do that, bless God. Again, He'll always bless you. Most important, stay in His Word. Every day in his word, even with trouble, it's still a good day. You know why? Jesus is the living word. Hearing God's word with understanding will change your life. We hope you have enjoyed studying God's word here on the Shepherd's Chapel Family Bible Study Hour with Pastor Arnold Murray. If you would like to receive more information concerning Shepherd's Chapel, you may request our free introductory offer. Our introductory offer contains the Mark of the Beast audio tape, our monthly newsletter with a written Bible study, a tape catalog, and a list of written reference works available through Shepherd's Chapel. To request our free introductory offer by telephone, call 800-643-4645, 24 hours a day. You may also request our introductory offer by writing to Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. Once again, that's Shepherd's Chapel, Post Office Box 416, Gravit, Arkansas, 72736. We invite you to join us for the next in-depth Bible study each weekday at this same time. Thank you for watching today's program, and God bless you. Ezra and Nehemiah. These two books are 